Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today's video I'll be walking through a speed paint that I created on Procreate of my Puffer Poodle character. I'm pretty new to Procreate so I thought it'd be interesting to see how I could tackle digital art on a new program. I did play around with Procreate in the past especially on my getting inspired by your comment video where I did an illustration trying out Procreate with some whale shark and mushroom and jellyfish kind of illustration. It's kind of hard to explain honestly, but I'll have a link in the description as well as a little side card here If you want to check out what I'm talking about for digital art I'm really used to Photoshop and the Adobe softwares are basically all we use in art school for digital art so I got pretty good and pretty fast at it. At the moment, I'm actually house sitting and since I don't have my usual setup with the lights and everything to do my traditional art for a video, and I just got my iPad Pro recently, I figured it's the perfect time to take advantage of this mobile option for my digital art. I recently rewatched one of my sketchbook tour videos with a ton of my animal hybrid sketches in it because I got a comment that time stamped when I actually got into the sketchbook and I wanted to see how long I rambled for. I'll have have a side card link here if you want to check out this video. It's actually doing really well and I think it's the most viewed video so far on my channel which makes me very happy. So thank you to all of you who actually watched it all the way so far and bared with my rambling. But anyway in that sketchbook tour I had a puffer poodle sketch and that little sketch re-inspired me to do another drawing with him. Anyway so long story short here we are and what you're watching if you can't tell by now is a time lapse video which is a feature in Procreate which is really really nice especially as someone who creates content on YouTube like myself. I will say though that I wish it could also record like zooming in and painting each brushstroke too. And I guess I could have screen recorded, but honestly, I didn't want it to overheat. And that's a lot of memory. I mean, I spent days on this drawing. It also kind of sucks that it's not full screen for this video because obviously the dimensions are not horizontal. But for posting to social media, especially with that 30 seconds time lapse option, it's really handy. I set the resolution to post poster size so that eventually when I get this piece to my liking, I can make prints and sell them in the future. So I found a really good reference photo of a poodle in a really dynamic pose that I thought would be perfect for this puffer poodle hybrid. I've been trying to get better at being as loose and gesturally as I am with a traditional sketchbook and pencil. And I will say that Procreate is a really intuitive program that made this a lot easier. I think most of it is because I'm used to my display tablet that is set up at an angle and I'm tied to my desk on my chair because everything is plugged into my PC and it's pretty stationary. But with the iPad, I'm literally sitting on a couch and I love being able to hold it like a sketchbook and it really made it feel more natural. So after I got the pose how I liked it, I added in the pufferfish details and I quickly sketched in some basic shading. The Apple Pencil has the ability to tilt and shade like you're using the side of your pencil in a traditional sense. And it's so cool and it's pretty seamless. I am probably able to do that with my display tablet stylus as well. I just don't have the setting set up or something but it's so nice that the Apple Pencil with Procreate already has all this on it right away so easily. And it's perfect for beginners like me who just picked up an iPad for the first time and might not know all of these settings right away and how to tweak them how you like it. Anyway, once I got the sketching down, I dove right into the line art. I love drawing line art because I love the crisp, clean, and tight lines. I really pull everything together in my sketch. And at this stage, I think it's when I spend the most of my time. It's where I really pay attention attention to what is in front of what and vary the line weight accordingly. It's also where I decide what lines from the sketch I want to keep into the final drawing. So it's a pretty important step. I was having some technical issues that was slowing me down quite a bit because randomly my pencil would just start skipping or stop picking up altogether. But my art school friend Alora suggested making sure that the nib was screwed on all the way on the Apple Pencil and that did the trick so thank you so much Alora. And if you haven't seen one of my three emoji art challenge videos. I actually featured Alora's response for three emojis that she submitted to turn into one drawing and I really love that video and it was really inspiring to create a drawing with the emojis that she submitted. I shout her out and I linked all of her social media in the description of that video too so I'll have a link and a little side card here for you to check that video out. Please go follow her on Instagram she's super talented. And with the line art, let me just say that the repetition of all of those spikes was so satisfying to draw in one by one. At first I thought it would be kind of boring and annoying to have to do so many, but at the end of the day, it was really satisfying to see it all come together. I mean, the spikes really make a pufferfish. 
The line art definitely took me the longest in this drawing process, but I'm going to speed it up the most because I feel like unless you're seeing it in real time, one, it's not as satisfying, and two, no one has time to sit through that and the hours I spent on it, so I'll speed through it and let's get on to the next step. After I did the line art, I don't know what made me want to make this puffer poodle purple, but also why not? So I took a lightish purple and colored the whole thing in. Then I zoomed way the heck in and erased around every little tiny spike to create a shape that I could lock and shade freely inside of. If you know an easier way to fill in a big shape like this accurately, please let me know because I know there's a way and I'm just digital art dumb probably. So if you know any tricks in Procreate or in general, please, please comment below and let me know. It would tremendously help the time I spend on illustrations in the future. So help a girl out. I will say though that it is really mindless to zoom and erase around every little spike and clean it up. So I was able to listen pretty intently to some podcasts and probably even an audiobook. And speaking of audiobooks, the sponsor of this video is Audible. I'm totally kidding. I wish I had a sponsor, but I've got a long way to go. I mean, I only have like 200 subs. But I guess if you're enjoying this video so far, maybe leave a like on this video and comment on it because likes and comments really, really help me out and allow for YouTube to show my video more for people to see. And if you like goofy animal hybrid and art content, I definitely encourage you to subscribe to this channel as well because I do upload a new video for you every Friday. Anyway, after getting the shape cut out, I decided to darken the purple and start adding some shading with the really fluffy textured brush to start to sculpt out the form of this puffer poodle. Then I started color picking from the purple tones that I created from the shading step and started making shapes to accomplish that same shading, but with crisp shapes instead. After I was happy with the shapes I made on the puffer poodle, I started coloring in all the spikes with a notch or two lighter or darker than the skin underneath it so that they really popped out. Then once all the spikes were colored in, I was kind of bored with the blank background, so I started to add some seaweed shapes to add some more atmosphere and a bit of an environment. And after adding in the seaweed shapes, I lowered the opacity a lot to push it back. And then I started recoloring the line art based on the colors of the spikes and the shapes that it was creating. For example, for the tongue, I would color pick the tongue color and make it a couple notches darker until it was dark enough so you could tell it was line art, but but not too dark that it was like a flat black line. My art professors in college would always get on me about my dark line art. So I always try to vary the line art colors based on what they're outlining, like I just described. I feel like this helps soften the harsh black line art and makes it less flat looking and more intentional with the colors around it. And it's tedious and a lot of work, but I think in the end it's worth it. After I colored in the line art, I started messing with the contrast and exposure and saturation of the piece as a whole. And at this point, I was just sick of looking at it and I called it quits for now and asked some of my art school friends in our Discord chat for feedback. And with their feedback, I think I'm gonna add some darkness behind the puffer poodle to make him stand out a little bit more from the background. And I might also add some bubbles and more little details. But at this point, I'm just tired of it and I need to take a step back and look at it again with some fresh eyes. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed watching my beginner's procreate drawing process. And if you have any feedback on this silly puffer poodle drawing, please let me know in the comments. I respond to every single comment and I love chatting with you guys. So please don't be shy. You guys seriously make my day when I see someone took the time to leave a little note on my video, you know? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video here every Friday and I would love to have you become a creative critter with me and follow along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, leave me a comment and let me know if you like the name Puffer Poodle, Pood for Fish, or Poo for Fish, or if you have a better name for this guy, I would love to know. You guys always have creative ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay creative and I'll see you in next Friday's video.